Hey everybody, it's the Chaos Weekly Community Call. I realized on our calendar it says weekly sync. That's the same thing. That's what you're here for. We're syncing up. It's May 23rd, Tuesday. Um, quick reminder, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct. So just keep that in mind as you interact with us here. And of course, you do not need to turn your camera on or off, whatever, like whatever. We don't care here. You're welcome to just chat with us on the side. Um, yeah, we don't care. We're easy. It's all good. Let's see what we have on our agenda today. If you could tell us what your favorite subject was in school, any grade level, even first grade, like whatever, whatever you want. I'm just curious. Don's a math person, Sophia's a math person, and Art, yeah, Armstrong, oh yeah. English, yeah, yeah, history, algebra, physics, love it. I'm not seeing any music. Who's a music fan? Somebody, somebody put music or like wood shop or something like that. That was fun. That was a fun class. I made a wooden uh, bubble gum machine. It didn't work very well, but yeah, it was the thought that counted, I guess. Um, oh, there's some chats here. Oh, Sophia went to music school. So like every, every music class you had. Enix saying technical. Ooh, technical drawing. Okay. That's cool. Like AutoCAD kind of stuff. Awesome. All right. Um, I put this on here from last week. It was, uh, we did not have a chance to talk about it. And I don't think you were here last week, Don. And I don't mean to put you on the spot at all, but um, just wanted to bring this up again. Do we know what our next steps are? Are we still looking at this or kind of where are we with this? It needs approval from the governing board and we're still trying to schedule a governing board meeting, which as you can imagine is hard given all of the people. So I think we're looking at scheduling. I was just looking at the, the email, the chaos board meeting for sometime in mid June. So I think for right now, this is just, just on hold until, until we can get in front of the governing board. That is fantastic. I wasn't sure if we had gotten that far. So yes present to governing board for approval mid June meeting question. Okay, awesome. Did anybody have anything else to add to this conversation? Did anybody give it, everyone get a chance to kind of look at this doc and mull it over? Were there anything else? I'm good. All right. Sounds like we're good to move on. Awesome. I was afraid that was going to take up the whole thing. So I put that first and here we are three minutes in done. Boom. Um, okay. The next one, number two is an update on the DEI survey from Anita. Anita, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Um, hey everyone. So, um, update from the DEI survey. Um, since October, the survey has been on, not the survey itself, the survey ended as of January, but we tried to do like one-on-one -on -one interviews with um, a few participants. And um, so far we had 17 persons that we interviewed. I still have two persons pending, but I hope I'm able to track them down. <laughs> and um, at the point, I tried to curate the feedback from the survey itself. And we had a total of 54 responses in total, um, like out of 192 persons that actually like um, went through the survey form. I curated all of that in a spreadsheet. I don't know if I should share that here. I don't know if it's sensitive information, I don't know. But I would be happy to share if that is also fine to share here. And, um, I also put together the interviews that I've had so far. We had 17 um, successful interviews with two asynchronous ones. And um, I've also put that all in one folder. So at the point, what I'm trying to understand is if the transcriptions that we got from, from the recordings are actually good to go, so we can start working on um, analyzing the data that we've gotten so far. So I think I need help on that and feedback from the community on, on the transcriptions from Zoom and um, 
every other thing. So that's where we're at. So I have a few comments, Anita. So first of all, like, that's amazing. 54 responses and 17 people interviewed. This is like approaching master's to PhD level amount of data collection. So there, that is absolutely no small task. <laughs> so congratulations to you. I know that's um, 17 interviews is an immense amount of work um, just between scheduling and doing the interviews. So <laughs> honestly, when I saw those numbers, like absolutely amazing. Um, thank you. Oh yeah, you bet. And thank you. Um, so do you, right now you have the Zoom, like the Zoom transcriptions, is that what you're saying? Like what Zoom provides? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I, I don't know how accurate they are and I don't know how like not accurate they are either. Has anybody like Kevin or Vinod, have you tried to line up? I know you've done a bunch of interviews, tried to ever line up Zoom transcriptions with some sort of guarantee that it's pretty good? Uh, so Zoom transcription is, uh, it's about 80 to 85% accurate. It's a useful tool to uh, get kind of an initial transcription and then you can kind of go through and edit it yourself as you're listening to it to get a, a more accurate uh, uh, translation. Uh, if you, uh, all of the, uh, all of kind of those, those um, machine powered translations are in that 80 to 85% range. Uh, if you want to get something closer to 90 to 95%, you need to uh, generally do a paid transcription that uh, involves uh, a human. Uh, but, uh, but I, but I found zoom transcription is a great inexpensive uh, way to transcribe things if you're if you're willing to go through and and edit them to kind of fix the errors that makes sense so yeah, i think i explained also to anita last time that we, were, uh, we could ask for one volunteer to go through the transcription the automatic transcription because those things work a lot with the accent and that is why regional accent sometimes, if people don't understand, they can set it to default. It will pick the regional aspect and it will upgrade with the tone. But if without that, that technicality, we can use that as a template, as Kevin said, then we fill out the gap because we are paying more attention to certain technical details in this interview. Since we'll be using grounded theory, so we really need the context uh, outlined. And I suggest somebody who is neutral because people will be involved in the qualitative analysis and who have not done grounded theory before and will be interested to know how it works. They don't really need to know or to see a lot of things beforehand. So it would be a kind of blind to us. So that it should not, be, we will have to minimize the bias. So if one person can volunteer, or two people can volunteer to go through the transcription and fill in the gap. Then when we have the, the raw uh, transcribed text, we start with intensive qualitative analysis on it. So Anita, then based on this, I might recommend that you spend a little bit of time just going through those interviews with yourself and making sure that they're anonymized. Okay. You know, just making sure there's no like references to the company or references to people. Or if you feel like there's something in the interview that is kind of implying something that might be able to single out a person, um, you really need to be careful on making sure those are anonymous, which would be great. And then it would probably be helpful to try to identify a person who might want to help um, finish out that 20 to 15 or yeah, 15 to 20% on the transcriptions just to kind of get it right and kind of include your own notes. I think as Sophia had put in there as well in the chat and Armstrong had alluded to. So trying to help ensure that there's 
really good, accurate transcription. Okay. And I think those would be great places to start. And then after that, it's probably going to make sense to create some sort of approach towards coding. I'm going to have to here stop for a second. Um, give me just give me a second. Um, while we're waiting for Matt to come back, um, Anita, you do have assistance with that. Is, Armstrong, are you helping with the qualitative analysis? Yeah, for the research, for the research, I would um, designing the research study. So I, uh, I just want somebody to intervene in this level of cleaning the data. Gotcha. Because, uh, like as I explained, we really need to keep the keep it a kind of a blind so that we don't reveal people too much on the study. Okay, so when Matt, yeah, so, okay, go ahead. You, you know, sorry. So uh, as we said uh, earlier, uh, I think Math, Sean and many others have shown interest to join the research. And as I said, we'll be using grounded theory analysis in the, in the text. I've seen the volume, it's encouraging. And then uh, some sort of statistical analysis also like structural equation model, I'll explain. Some of these things is just people who are interested to join are more welcome. Then we'll find a session where we can now explain how the research and the paper will be will be conducted. Since it, we are aiming at either XC or TXZ, we really need high quality paper out of this. And I, I think I contacted, uh, I don't know if math is here, I contacted one other a uh, member of the community who has really been influential in uh, this kind of research studies and we we'll have a good number of people on this underrepresented study yeah what so is those the, who are uh, available yeah oh sorry I was, ahead, I, was, I was just going to ask you about the statistical analysis what is what does that look like yeah like in structural equation uh, model we use that a lot for to analyze uh, survey data and to find out uh, a kind of uh, latent properties. We'll, I'll explain how it works. I've used it a couple of times in research papers. Is it part? Of, it's part of the. It's part of the qualitative analysis of the document. It's the surveys, Kevin. Would be oh, this, yeah, oh you know, the surveys. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Mm -hmm. So I, I would suggest that we put together a, a group of folks that have an interest in this, because I do think there's a lot of things that we need to sort out um, that we don't have to sort it out here. And so maybe Anita, not the actual first step would be to identify who those people are that want to participate in, in this and moving it towards a, a research paper. Because if we do this, there are a variety of things we have to do from data, kind of the initial data stages to code books, I do think we need to consider IRB, particularly this is going towards a university publication. Um, they're just a variety of things that I think we need to sort out and I don't think we can do it here on this call. Okay, so the last time we brought this discussion out, I had a few questions like Sean and um, that int indicated interest. So I think I'll just create um, a Slack group Perfect. where I would, um, introduce this topic once again. Perfect. And then we can just add people to the Slack group if, you know, as we think they might have an interest or, you know, that kind of stuff. That'd be great. So I, th I think the in initial group would be you and Armstrong and Sean, myself, Kevin, I don't know if you had an interest or anybody really for that matter. I'd be happy to join. Yeah, you can you can add me and I'll I'll hop in and if I can help, I will uh, continue to help. And if I if I can't, I'll step away. Okay. That sounds great. So how did that, awesome. that's great. Great. Thanks everyone. We're here for shake. Thanks, Anita. Thank you, Anita. Yeah, like Matt said, for all that work. Oh my gosh, so much work. So much so, work. <laughs> I'm excited though to see what the what the final analysis brings up. Um, I think that will really, really help our our DEI group for sure. 
Um, so I'm super excited about that. Me too. Um, any other final questions for or comments for Anita and Armstrong and whoever else? All right, we'll move on. Um, just want to let everybody know that the DEI project badging that we've been talking about for a while, um, that we are partnering with the All In group, which is mostly run by GitHub, um, does have a few others in it. Um, it's been published on the website as a pilot. So I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, yeah. So basically we're taking kind of the sort of the model from our event badging ish and applying it now to projects. That's what the goal is. And it's all going to be run through this DEI.md file where we're asking projects to fill this file out. And this is all based on four of our chaos DEI metrics, um, project access, communication, transparency, newcomer experiences and inclusive leadership. So we had a um, panel discussion yesterday um, that is, it was recorded, but it's not finished processing yet from what I understand. And that will be on the GitHub YouTube. Um, so it, we talked about kind of how it works and what the DEI.md file is. Um, so as soon as that recording is available, I will definitely share it with everybody. Um, it was a great meeting. And we are accepting applications for pilot projects. If you do know folks that have um, that run open source projects and want to participate in this um, as a pilot, we there's a, a button right here. It says participate now, and it just takes you to a little form um, that folks can fill out. We also are asking anybody from the larger open source community if they would like to join in and help us develop these DEI metrics, because this is obviously an open transparent thing. We want to hear more voices. Um, we want more input on these metrics and future levels of this badging. So we do have an option for folks to join us there. And then if we get responses, I'll reach out to them and give them information about how to join. So yeah. Anybody want to add anything, Matt, or is, I don't know if Ruth's on. I mean, honestly, this is just, it's really exciting to see. This has been many years <laughs> in conversation. Um, and so whether it's the metrics, the DEI file, the DEI.md file, partnership with All In, coordinating with GitHub, like it is stemming from badging, uh, event badging. I mean, it's just been so many people and so many different um, ideas. And I don't know, just there's so, so much here. So it, to me, it's really exciting to see this. Um, because this also then brings forward four more metrics from the DEI working group, in addition to the, I don't even know how many we have in event badging right now, six or seven. So this is, how many do we have? Do you know? You're muted. So I'll guess seven. Say that. What was your question? I'm sorry. How many metrics do we have in event badging? Um... Good question. I think there is about seven and we're going to be adding a few more over the summer. So, yeah. This is just, it's, so it's my, I guess like that, if it's seven, then that's, you know, 11 chaos DEI metrics that are in practice helping projects and events uh, think how to best center DEI within their work. So that's just really great to have the, these metrics, you know, having a, a big impact. So I was just really happy to see this happening. And we did want to just give a shout out to everybody, everybody, everybody who has worked on this project um, from event badging, you know, the, from concept to um, shipping that and also just all of the badging in general conversations and the, um, you know, badging website, just everything. There's just so many people who have worked on this. So we just wanted to let everyone know we did thank you in the recording. <laughs> if you weren't there, we did thank you. And we'll thank you again here because Obviously, it's a group effort and um, couldn't do it without all these folks. So, does anybody have questions about that? About the how this, what this is, or how it works, or anything like that? Okay, cool. All okay. right. Um, yeah. There's other things. I don't know if we can say it though. I don't maybe not until it's released. Okay. All right. 
I'm, yeah, I wanted to talk about it last week. <laughs> That's a teaser for those of you who, don't, who haven't heard. Um, yeah, there's other stuff, but we'll we'll get to it when it, when we get to it. So sorry, delete this part from the recording. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Anyway, I'll go ahead and move on. Um, oh, Sophia was there. Yay! Thank you, Sophia. Did you catch the part where I shared my entire desktop, which I have literally never done ever? in these i mean how many how, i've been here years how many dozens and hundreds i don't even know 100 meetings here chaos i've never shared my whole desktop live and of course i did it yesterday so that was great i'm glad it was on the recording for everybody to see anyway um yeah so let's go ahead and move on um this is not a huge deal we talked about this last week about trying to be more inclusive and more transparent and um, make our conversations and meetings a little more discoverable for folks who can't make it or who miss a meeting. So we are going to do this. I did the first round um, last week and I will continue to do it. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going to, so each meeting has a summary and I think um, Matt put it down here. Yeah, where it's like completed, in progress, um, open-ended or other interesting topics we bring up. And I also added one that says deferred to next week so that it's just, you know, real high level thing it's not a big deal. So if you do miss a meeting, you can find those um, in discourse. I just started a discourse thread for each meeting. So hopefully it doesn't clog up discourse or I don't, even, I don't even know if anybody's using discourse, but that's where they are. And also in the newsletter. If that makes sense. This on the reminder, because like I, you know, we had the metrics model meeting today and I didn't do it. And I did it. Yeah, I, no, I, I didn't. Did it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just, I'm not, it's not like part of my regular end of meeting kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, so uh, what I did was I just put it as a... Thanks for doing that. Oh, yeah, no, I was mostly for me, so I didn't forget. I just put it as a comment here. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So I just, it's going to look like this, and this is what it's going to look like in the newsletter and... Okay. Uh, ...in other places. Okay. So we'll keep doing it and we'll see how it goes. I'll continue to do it. Um, oops. As we go. Okay. Um, Thanks. And we'll just, just see. And if you do, if you, somebody who does like to have things in their email box instead, you can subscribe to this tag in Discourse and it'll, you'll get a summary then of all the meetings at once. And you can know all the things that happen in chaos. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I'll take a look. I, I haven't even seen that. That's interesting because it might be helpful for like all of us too, just to kind of remind ourselves where different conversations are happening. Yeah. Um, yes, because like sometimes we do have conversations that take a tangent and are a little off topic for that sure. meeting yep. and then it applies. I was also going to say in the weekly newsletter, what I did was try to point everybody to discourse so that if there were comments or questions that they would all happen in one place. Okay. So okay. that's what the newsletter looks like. So we'll keep trying. And I'm also gonna put that summary in the YouTube videos, which I'm super behind on uploading, but that's on my list for today. Okay. You can point out that Sophia was the chaotic of the week. I know, look at this, I love this so much. She sent me two pictures and she was like, pick one. One was very contemplative and one was this one. And I'm like, oh, Sophia, yeah, no, it has to be this one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a, was that a food bucket? <laughs> it was a food bucket, yes. <laughs> but it was a fun one. Oh, is it, it's owls. Is it owl eyes? Yeah, like. I, should, I should have been facing forward because then you could see the full owl. But this was <laughs> this was the moment that was captured. <laughs> yeah, the Baturgians found it in an Asian supermarket and it was full of uh, Asian snacks. And they uh, bought it because it had an owl. Yeah, you can't pass that up. It's right? Cute. I would have bought it too. <laughs> yes. Hands down, full stop. I would have bought that. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we'll keep posting these around and just see if they help maybe they won't we don't know we'll try it as uh demetrius mentioned a comment yesterday we are shipping to learn so <laughs> we're trying it and seeing and we're just gonna learn as we go we'll figure it out i love that i'm gonna use that with everything i'm shipping to learn um okay 
Uh, we have one more thing on the agenda, which is a super important thing that we came up with in today's office hours. So thank you, Visayo and Mary Blessing, and I think Gilbert was in there, and myself, we were just talking about our pets, and I was like, we should have a Slack channel where we can put um, we can put our pets, and yeah, so we started one. And it can be pics of your life, whatever you want, because it's kind of interesting how we are all spread out throughout the whole globe, and it's just really interesting to see like little snippets of your daily life and like what you see and what's it, what's going on in your world. Um, so if there is something you want to share in a photo way, um, feel free to drop it in there. Yeah, apologies for creating a new Slack channel, but <laughs> we did it. I'm currently I'm watching a squirrel eat at a table. I'm, I've already rebelled and posted videos, even though it says photo dump. <laughs> That's okay. And if we need to change the name, like I don't know if that makes sense to everybody. If we need to change the name, we can. You know, we just we just came up with it. So, yeah. So yes, please dump all your happy, cute photos in that channel. I can do that. I feel like you were trying to do this like two years ago, Elizabeth. Yeah, I finally got a, a crowd of support. So I was like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> it's like, I know, I know we're productive and we do stuff here at Chaos. That is, is important and professional. But at the same time, I also really just selfishly need that outlet of let's screw around for a little bit. <laughs> let's just have some so, fun over here in this little channel right here. Who, who has a copyright on these photos now? Uh, now, see, I don't know. I am not a lawyer. <laughs> a I N A L. I Can I use them? Can I use them <laughs> without giving credit? I feel like you probably should get credit. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to put that in our data use statement or something. I don't know. Um, okay, so who else? We have so much time left. I don't know how this happened. How did this happen? We have so much time. What is? What else is on y'all's mind? If there's My stuff. My only thing was I'm going to take the a lot of the notes, Sophia, I think that you had provided for ChaosCon. This week I plan on kind of putting them into a blog post like what we did for um, for Brussels. And so I have a few other notes as well. So I'll share that with with you. I just I like the structure of it. And I think it was really helpful in terms of sharing the information with other people. Yeah, I'd be happy to edit it too. And I, it was, I sent it to the chaos committee, but I think we can send it out broadly to anyone who attended. I think there might've been others that had notes or reactions they would want to add to it. So I'm, yeah. I'm fine with it becoming a sharing doc. Right on, perfect, thank you. I had a random one too. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the chat. Uh, it's another public dashboard tool that I've been following for a time. Um, and they seem like they're doing a lot of active development. So it's, it seems like it's significantly improved in the last six months since I looked at it. Uh, and I just wanted to share it for the broader metrics community uh, to be aware of yet another public dashboard tool. Um, it is hosted by and funded by another company. So it's free for now. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see if it stays free forever. We can't really guarantee that, but um, just wanted to make this group aware that it existed and maybe want to be interested in following along how it gets developed and where it goes. So we did, we actually talked about this in, I think the metric model meeting last week or um, like two weeks ago when you were in Vancouver. And um, yes, I think it's a company and I think it's a lot to kind of demonstrate there's an open source database behind it. TIDB? I don't know how to say that one. Yeah, I think that's their infrastructure. Like it's okay. a, it seems like it's a cloud provider. Um, so it's definitely being funded by this one company. Um, and I know their data model is now a combination of multiple feeds. Uh, when I read about it initially, they were using historical data from archive, but then now also pulling in real time data to populate that feed. So I think it's kind of getting mashed up on the back end. <laughs> uh, so I'm curious how it compares with other tools in terms of comprehensiveness and accuracy. I know as someone who uses Archive a lot, it, has, it is not very accurate or comprehensive. Again, I use it as an estimation and a trend indicator, but if you want real-time data, I caution against it. Um, and so I think they're trying to kind of offer both by using both that historical tool and a real feed. 
Um, but it seems like, again, it's, a, it's an active development that they have a GitHub page and are opening, open to pull requests if folks see things or suggest things. I'm not sure how collaborative it is in practice, but it's there. Just put the company, I think that's the company. And just for those of you that remember Ray Paik, yeah. I think Ray works with PingCap. And so this is how I came across it as well. So Sophia, like if you have questions about this, like, like anyway, there's, I think there's an easy point of connection. Good to know, thanks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone else feels like this. This is mesmerizing. Like I would, I feel like I would just like stare at that all day. I don't know why. I would, I would be making PRs just hoping I would get like famous. Yeah, I feel like I want to push something to one of my repos just so I can see it scroll yeah. past. Right? <laughs> I'm feeling. But it says it's a random, it's a random pick. So uh -huh. you're going to have to just like fire hose it, Dawn, to game the system. I'll just keep trying. I see it. It. Yeah, do it. Yeah, that's really mesmerizing. Thanks for sharing that, Sophia. Uh, we still have 14 minutes. So anything else? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to add on the data statement. I've removed all the data statements from all the metrics. Just two PRs needs to be merged and we are good to go and add it to the WordPress. So this is just for everybody, the data ethics statement that's in all of the metrics. We're removing it as a like, like hard coded into every metric and it's gonna be right. Just like what Elizabeth just wrote distributed via WordPress module. So we can just centralize it a little bit better. And it's gonna be down at the bottom of the page. It's part of an effort to kind of simplify the uh, those metrics uh, Markdown sheets themselves. Yep. And that module does that module also pull from a GitHub? Is that right? It can. Uh, right now, it does not. Okay. Uh, so it it kind of if uh, so there's there's two modules we've added. So one of them is a one of them has a the the two URLs in it. Uh, so the the link to the uh, GitHub URL where you can uh, put in a, a change request to to edit the metric, and then the the second link is a link to the the stable uh, the stable URL uh, that has the the number in it. If you want to reference it in your software or in your uh, documentation, uh, so that one. It's it's part of the template, but when it gets when we create those metrics, it has to be edited uh, individually, right? To add the specific URLs, so that one is in uh, in WordPress. Uh, the second one, the 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 data statement, we're not going to have to edit that very often, so it would make sense to add that to GitHub. Uh, however, it's it's not currently in GitHub. Right now it is just a, a modifiable uh, text module. So if you'd, if you'd like me to move it to GitHub, I can. It's just a, it's kind of the, uh, the amount of time or the, the number of times that it would need to be edited and, and who would edit it, I suppose, would determine where it would exist. Uh, my guess is that it should probably exist in the community repo. That makes sense to me. Uh, just a note on uh, data statement as I was doing this exercise. At some places, there is a header for it. At some places, there is no header for it. So the, like to bring the consistency, should we bring, uh, include the header or not? It's just a thought. I think the header will exist. The one example that Kevin had shared project access. Do you want to you want to peek at that one real quick? You want me, I was just saying, do you want me to look at that? <laughs> was that a hint to me? <laughs> uh, I was just staring at it. I got <laughs> just started uh, here. 
Actually, so the, interestingly, there's two data statements in it right now. Yeah. So the uh, the the one on the top is part of the, the markdown, and yeah. it needs to be removed. Kevin has a piano in the background. I think he's at a coffee shop. I am. Sorry about that. I'll mute. <laughs> I think I think you already did this PR too, uh, Vinod. Did you not? I think I saw that come through. Where one of these yes. is removed. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, just PR for the DI working group and for the risk working group needs to be merged, and then this will wipe uh, remove. So when that when that data ethics statement above gets removed, yes, the header will also be removed. Right. In so my PR. A, yes. So I, I actually I have a PR in for that as well. For this for this specific one so the, the the next line then the first part of the module is the to edit this uh metric please submit a change request so that line will kind of merge a little bit with the contributors right so we have the contributors and then we come down and then we have that line that says if you want to basically if you want to contribute to the document submit a change request here uh and then the uh the second part of that module is the uh the stable URL, and then at the very end of the document, we have the the data usage statement, data uh, ethics statement, uh, and I did not include the uh, the header in it. I, I didn't think it was necessary. I can include that, uh, and then per the uh, converse another conversation we were having on Slack, at the bottom uh, of this document we do have tags. Those are the keywords uh, for the uh, for the metric. I like the look of that. So it would just be those three lines. It would say to edit, first line, to reference, second line, the usage, third paragraph, and then those tags. Is yep. that right? Yep. And I bring that up because there is a discussion about removing the context tags and keywords from the markdown files as well. I like the look of those four things that you just talked about. Yeah, and this looks yeah. cleaner too. I, I do too. I really like that the tags are clickable too by, by doing that. I think that's great. All right. So thanks for sorting that out. Definitely, Kevin. Thank you. I wonder what happens so, if you like this. In regards to those two URLs, uh, I did not make them clickable uh, because for the uh, for the second metric, that's probably a uh, you probably want to copy that rather than than clicking. Uh, and then for the for the first one, I could make that clickable if we wanted. I would uh, like the first one to be clickable. I, okay. I agree. You don't need to make the second one clickable. It just kind of take you back to here. Okay. Awesome. And yes, uh, we should always have music in the background. So Kevin, you're always going to have to come. That was a conversation <laughs> going on. <laughs> <laughs> So Kevin, you're on music next week too. <laughs> you're the DJ. <laughs> kind of some some low key piano background music. Yep. Yeah. Is it is it live or is it just background music? So I'm actually at the I'm at the uh, Omaha Music Conservatory. Uh, so there's a there's a coffee shop in front of uh, in the uh, in the entryway to the the music conservatory. So this it's not actually live music, but they they do do live music here quite often. <laughs> Uh, my kids go there to learn viola, so I know where he's at. All right, I think we are. Oh, here's a link. Yes. All meetings are going to be headquartered there from now on. I love it. All right, I think we're about done. We can have six minutes back, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and for hanging out with us and for chatting and solving all the problems at chaos and the world we appreciate you and we will see you here same time next week thanks everybody Thank you, everybody bye, bye. everybody bye